Hey y'all, it's Raj with EV365 and today we're looking at the Tesla to J1772 connector by Nivian. Alright y'all, here it is, the 80 amp Tesla to J1772 adapter by Nivion and Nivion sent this to me to review um, so I'll do an honest review of it they didn't ask me to say anything in particular so I'll do an honest review and I also wanted to thank you guys for subscribing that's obviously why companies would be interested in sending me products to review um, so as a way to pay it back eventually we'll start doing some giveaways of the things we receive um, to our subscribers so again thank you and I appreciate it um, so yeah let's go ahead and get that adapter out of the box and you can see it comes packed pretty nicely. Um, it's got this nice foam. So, you know, shipping wise, I think this thing will do all right. And yeah, it's in that thick foam in there. Um, and yeah, when you pull it out right away, I can tell this thing feels really nice, real substantial. Um, and it's just made from a good hard plastic. Um, and it's got this kind of nice matte color, which I'm, <laughs> I'm a sucker for matte. Both my vehicles right now. The, uh, the ones that we're reviewing, the Fisker and the Rivian, which, you know, which I'm going to hold on to, obviously, uh, both kind of have a matte color on them. So, yeah, really cool looking adapter and very solid. I mean, it's weighty. Um, you can do some curls with this thing. Um, no, but it, it actually feels really good. Um, it doesn't feel like it's something that if you drop, it's going to break. And the, um, the clip that connects when you hook into the vehicle, um, that's pretty strong. It doesn't feel like that spring is going to wear out anytime soon and the clip even though it's plastic is pretty pretty strong as well um, so yeah that's the that's the connector and the reason you'd want a connector like this obviously is if you've got a um, tesla wall connector at home or a tesla mobile charger uh, you can use this adapter pop it onto your tesla connector and charge a non-tesla vehicle you know like in my case we're going to try it out on the rivian which I know works with these adapters. So that's why we're gonna do that. Um, and, and one key thing is when you do get these adapters, if you've got a Tesla wall connector, you wanna make sure those wall connectors are set to um, be able to give charge to non-Tesla vehicles. And there's a way to do that by connecting to the connector, um, which you can look into the test lab to, uh, to figure out how to do all that. Um, honestly, we haven't had luck with that on the, the Tesla universal connector, which is surprising because it comes with its own adapter um, but we haven't gotten this one to work and, and that is a common issue I've seen you know on some message boards and stuff for folks with Rivians and Fiskers and things like that so it may not be quite ready so we're going to use the uh, the mobile connector that Tesla has for our testing today which on that there's not really anything you need to do from my experience you just plug and play um, so yeah that's kind of how that looks and and you can obviously use this at destination chargers Tesla destination chargers are well as well so at hotels, shopping centers, uh, movie theaters, that type of stuff. And again, it's only for level two, not for DC fast charging. Um, the, the beauty of Tesla is that it, um, it uses the same connector for level two charging and for level three charging, but that can also be confusing and folks may go to a supercharger thinking this is gonna work, it won't. Um, so just remember that. And this, I did notice something, the Nivian adapter does have a clip to, to latch onto the Tesla charger, but it doesn't look like it catches. So you can, you can just kind of pull it off. So somebody walking by at a public charger, if they want to charge, they, they may be able to yank it out of your car and put it into theirs. Um, and even if it did latch, you can still do that, but it's just, you know, it's an extra step. Um, so yeah, just something I wanted to point out, but otherwise this thing feels solidly built. Um, and what I like to do is just kind of read over the box. Um, you know, with electronics, Honestly, if it's not on the box, that means they probably didn't think it was important enough to put on there. So I'll give you the information that's on the box. If there's anything else you want, um, I will put the links to the company's website and to their Amazon page um, in the comment or in the, the notes below. So you can, uh, you can go check that out and get more information, uh, read additional reviews on Amazon's page. Um, but yeah, so it says it's the 80 amp Tesla to J1772 Type 1 adapter. So I guess that's the model. Um, and it's compatible with the Tesla wall connector, Tesla destination chargers, and Tesla mobile connectors. Not compatible with the Tesla supercharger. Key thing to remember. 
Um, so the product info, it can take a max current of 80 amps, which is good. So basically any vehicle that can accept level two charging um, from, from zero amps all the way up to 80 amps. So like the Ford F-150 Lightning, the Porsche Taycan, they can all use this. You know, they can accept that 19.2 kilowatts. Most folks are gonna be in the 48 amp, 40 amp, uh, 32 amp range. So that's anywhere from 7.2 kilowatts up to, um, I believe it's 11.5 kilowatts when you're at a, on a 48 amp, um, a 48 amp uh, pole. So, and the working temperature is negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. That's standard basically for all charging equipment and adapters and things like that. So you can use this in any temperatures. Um, it is UL certified. So that's one of the US uh, safety certifications, the underwriters laboratory, um, and it is 40 VO. So this, if it, if there was a spark or if there was some type of fire situation, this plastic would actually self extinguish within 10 seconds or less. Um, so that's, uh, that's, that's good to have that UL certification. Um, it is salt and corrosion, uh, resistant. So if you li live somewhere, um, that's close to the beach or has a lot of sand, this might be a unit for you. Um, and it's also IP65 rated. So that means it's, uh, the six in there means it's dust proof or dust resistant. So again, if you're around sand, um, things like that, this is good. And the five means it's uh, water resistant. So if it's, uh, you know, raining, um, you know, unless it's like torrential downpours, but if it's just raining and drizzling, uh, you can use this in most weather conditions. Obviously, you're not gonna wanna drop it in a bucket of water and try to use it. But yeah, in, in normal, rain type situations, you're gonna be all right. So yeah, like I said, what we're gonna do is take the Tesla mobile connector, um, get this connected and uh, run it outside and we'll run it for about an hour and make sure there's no heating issues or anything like that, but we should pull about 7.5 to 7.6 kilowatts the whole way through for that one hour and, uh, and we'll let you know how that goes. Okay, so here we are by the Rivian and we like to use the Rivian for um, our charging test because we know it's gotten all the software updates to work with adapters or at least most adapters and sometimes vehicles do need updates in order to work with different adapters um, and then also for videos it's very easy to see if it's working or not so we do like to use the Rivian for that reason and and so here what you do is you just pop it in and typically what the kind of rule of thumb is you want to wait for about 30 seconds that way if there's any communication that does need to happen between your connector and the, the Tesla charging um, at a point, it can do that. So you just wait for about 30 seconds, uh, make sure everything's secure. And then once you pop it in, it should be like any other J1772 connector that you use. Yeah, it pops in, you know, you're not gonna be able to pull that out unless you hit the latch. You see it turns red and that's normal. You know, initially that'll freak you out, but that's just the vehicle kind of recognizing that, okay, there's something different being plugged in. And then once it recognizes it, it'll turn green, and then you can see the bar across the front. So that means we're pulling a charge. So it's working great. Um, so yeah, we'll let that charge for about an hour, and then we'll come back out, make sure everything feels all right, no heating issues or anything like that. And we'll show you the charging curve, which really at level two, we shouldn't have any issues. It should pull at about 7.5, 7.6 kilowatts, pretty strong the entire time. Um, all right, we'll check in in an hour. All right, y'all, so it's been a little bit over an hour that we've been charging um, and just feeling that adapter. Yeah, that thing hasn't heated up at all, so it's doing well, feels good. Um, and we pretty much held 7.5 to 7.6 kilowatts uh, throughout the charge, which is what you'd expect um, if you're charging on level two, unless there's just something really wrong with the adapter. So that worked out all right. So we're just gonna unlock the vehicle here so we can, yeah, there we go. So we can pull the adapter out and you can see, pull the button, comes right out. And uh, the charge was a success. So yeah, that's the uh, Nivian uh, Tesla to J1772 connector and it, it worked pretty well for us and uh, didn't have any heating issues or anything like that. So thanks for tuning in. Like I said, if you want some more information, we've got the links in the comments and uh, let me know if you have any questions and I'll try to get those answered for you. Hang loose y'all. Thank <laughs> you.